Welcome to our Thursday night live stream. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. <laughs> we talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond a couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Did Sarah get you too? Sarah said, hello from the frozen tundra. <laughs> that now, tickled me. Now I'm going to make Sarah feel bad. Okay. Because I was diving today, and it was 85 degrees. Oh my and goodness. And it was 70, my computer registered 79 degrees at 110 feet. Well, you know what? So I, I'm actually thinking like I'm wearing a three male wetsuit and I was hot. I was just telling Rachel, I think I needed to get a thinner wetsuit because it's only February. Like I'm going to like be ridiculously hot. You know what I think you need to do is turn the air down here in the house. I am freezing right now. And be, you know, like be more comfortable. I spent two hours in 80 degree water, which I know everyone's like boo hoo, but that makes you cold when you come up top. So, <laughs> people have like ice. People are dealing with black ice right now. They don't want to hear about your little crying and whining. Jackie said, "Oh, with wrist brace." So, um, yeah, a couple people have asked what happened to my wrist. Uh, I have a little bit of carpal tunnel, but more of it is I was doing something and I bent my wrist backwards, and so now I have this shooting pain up here and into my fingers, and I'm trying to get it to heal because I was having a hard time even making a fist. So what I'm pretty much doing is whenever possible, I'm wearing this because it prevents me from using my wrist so much. I saw Air Fry and Andy is in here. Shauna actually made a bubble wrap hat for Joe. Yeah. Um, I think it was last year, right, when we were going to the... I'm accident prone when I'm above the water. Super, super accident prone. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have to cover his whole body in bubble wrap. It's ridiculous. So welcome to our Thursday live stream. If you are new here... Welcome. Uh, Thursday live streams are just a chance for us to hang out with our community and answer questions. So we kind of let the ch uh, the chat dictate where we're going, what we're going to talk about. If you have any keto questions, carnivore questions, go ahead and ask them. We try to get to as many as possible. The easiest two ways to get us to notice your question, if you have a good question, is first of all, you can try going at Two Crazy Ketos, because I'll notice that, because a lot of times people are just talking to themselves. Right. Uh, the best way to get us to notice a question is uh, by using a super chat function, which does two things. First, it supports the channel, but also it highlights our screen, so we know to make sure we get it. We answer questions and talk to people who don't do super chats. I don't want anyone to say, oh, well, they only talk to people who do super chats. That is not the case. No. It just lets us know. It kind of highlights you. So I see Sabrina and Mark tomorrow are going to be waking up to negative six. Mark, a.k.a. Burt Reynolds. Yes. Uh, waking up to negative six degrees. Yeah. Negative six. My friend Yu was going up to go skiing. He said it was negative 20 up there. Where is he at? New he's, Hampshire? Yeah, he's going up to New Hampshire. Great day in the so morning. His, his kids are Floridians and, and have no idea what they're about to experience. Negative eight for Debbie. Yeah. So. Stop crying and whining. I know. I know. So anyway, yeah, go ahead and ask your questions, things like that. I do want to remind everybody, we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals. We are two people who have lost over 100 pounds and maintained it for me. Now I'm going into my seventh year, this just finishing up my sixth a year. A high five year for me. High yep. five. So you're heading into year six. And um, yeah, so everything we talk about is based on our own personal experience as well as what we learn from people who are doctors, nurses, now, and health professionals. If you are brand spanking new, like maybe this is just month two for you, you started keto in January. What are you already noticing about this keto life? Because I will tell you something I noticed right away, something that my mom remarked on right away was, I have more energy. We yeah. have way more energy. I remember when we started keto, at least for me, I felt like I needed to slow down like my intensity and my volume when I was speaking to people because I felt like I was talking really loud and really fast. Yeah. I saw Chris was was here, but he's got to leave for a meeting, so I wanted to show you guys two things. Yeah. First, 
Uh, we dove two things. I dove a wreck today at 122 was it feet a of wreck? water. It, it, it's a great wreck. It's called the Rodeo. I'm a great um, wreck. And, but unfortunately, the last hurricane, it's kind of leaned. We've had a couple of hurricanes lean it over, and now a big portion of it has fallen over. So, like, yeah, the storms are damaging it. And then the second one, we went to a reef called Razzle Dazzle. Razzle Dazzle. feet of water up to 50. But I wanted to show you guys. We're going to, I have a vlog coming about this, which we're, I know we're behind on vlogs. But I found this giant sea turtle. Look at this thing. And by giant, now, how this big? This picture does not really identify how big this guy was. It's hard to tell in the picture. He's got barnacle on him. How yeah. long has he been sitting there? But we did um, get him to swim, and he was almost the length of me. Like a six foot long Like he long was about five turtle. feet long. And you'll see that in the vlog. But oh my god! So the deeper you get, the more the treasures. The cooler the things, yes. Yeah, that makes and sense. And that's why, like, I was talking to uh, Missy today, who was the person who was, we're doing some technical learning. And she was like, right... She's like, we got to get Rachel down to like 30 to 45 feet. And he, she's like, once I get her to 30, she's going to go to 60, no problem. He's like, what we're going to do is we're going to distract her or give her the camera. Right. Because you won't notice you're going down. If I have a but job. If, if you have a job. Do you do better if you have a job to she's do? She's like, you won't notice. In moments of being nervous. I also had a lionfish about this big. And I speared him, was going to bring him home for dinner. And then he was so big, he fought his way off the spear. So he's dead at the bottom of the ocean somewhere. But that's a good thing. Because it's They an actually encourage species. you. Even if you don't want to eat him, kill him. They're invasive. They have no known predators. And when I was talking to the captain today, so they, there's researchers that research lionfish. Yeah. All the fish up in up and down the East Coast, all the lionfish, they can literally trace their DNA back to two specific fish. Like the Adam and Eve of lionfish. The Adam and Eve of lionfish in the north in, in the north on the East Coast. How many babies and have they had? They can have like three million eggs a year. You wait, a single lionfish? Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and they ruin our reefs. So if it is invasive and you can have and three no, million. And there's no known predator. Oh, it's a bad, yeah. that's a bad and, recipe. And they've only been here in Florida since 1985, something like that. So, so yeah. I shared a good recipe. Florida, right, Florida. They found them in Florida, right here in Davie. I reshared a good recipe today. Our chocolate flourless cake. Nice. Actually, not even our recipe. Michelle came up with it. But I did post a, a link in Facebook Family Group and Mighty Networks. Because, again, we've got new peeps. This is new. How do I Valentine's Day? How are you planning on Valentine's Day? Are you going to bake something sweet for your sweetie? There are keto options, which I love. So the other thing I wanted to tell Chris was, you know how we went out on the... Um, the Jungle Queen the other day. Yes, we did. Right? Well, we the River Queen. The Millionaire Row and the $200 million yachts. One of them, they said, if it never leaves port, it's $25 million. Just to, to sit just there. Just to sit there no. a year. But the guy makes more than that in interest in a day, so no big deal. Wow. But so I was in the dive shop, and they have all these tanks that are going to one of those yachts. I wanted to tell Chris, one of the yachts, I don't know which one. There's like non-disclosure agreements. You can't tell me all of the specifics has their own decompression chamber on the yacht. So when we were... So when they get the bends, they can decompress themselves. themselves. Maybe they should just like not no, put themselves they're, in they're, jeopardy. They're diving like 200, 300 feet of water. So what was interesting was they had a bunch of tanks when we went in with Chris. And it was like, gosh, there's... I remember Chris saying like... Those all belong to the yachts. And that belong to the yachts. They all belong to the yachts. It was crazy. In fact, one of the big giant ones that we passed by had an indoor tennis court inside of the yacht. How much tennis are you planning on playing? Yeah. Like, seriously. Tina said, hi, our scuba diving hi. buddies, hopefully soon. Come on down. Come on down. I will go out any time. And, and I was going to go he out Saturday it. afternoon, but they're saying weather's going to be really bad on Saturday. Yeah. So today we had less than one fiddle. Cindy, of her first live welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Um, okay, so Mama Cat, we finally got into the 40s today in Colorado. It was wonderful. I saw a couple questions I'm trying to get when to. When you are excited that the temperatures are up to the 40s, that's when you know it's a cold winter. 
John's here. Said hey, John. hello, Joe and Rachel. We're new to keto. The wife and I are looking forward to seeing you both oh. at KetoCon. Nah, -uh. I'm looking forward to seeing you and your wife at KetoCon, John. That's how it goes in so, that direction. KetoCon. If you are new to keto, it's the largest keto conference. It's really cool. Bring a tote uh, bag. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. There is a link down below. You can use the code Two Crazy Ketos. You get fifty bucks off your ticket. I don't know if they went up on February. Excuse me, February 1st or not. Gracious. Uh, but we do get $50 off. We don't make any money off of it. We are emceeing. And for those of you who are curious, we will be emceeing Saturday and we are speaking on Sunday. So excited about that. Excited to get that. I see Carnivore Crisps is in the house. Welcome. We freaking love those things. Uh, Jennifer said, my brother used to wear his wetsuit to stay warm when he drove his Max Dune buggy to work in the winter. That's actually brilliant, right? Like, why not? It keeps you warm. And I will say, when we went out with Chris and Miriam, even from, like, a boat dive, it, uh, not a boat dive, a beach dive, beach dive, it was cold, but, like, instantly I acclimated. Like, I, it was like, oh, it's cold. Okay, now I'm warm. It was really nice. Heath's here. Said, hey, hey yo. yo. Be right back. Typing up the promo for tomorrow's Friday night feast. I didn't even think about it. Today's Groundhog's Day. <gasps> so so maybe it's not tomorrow, Heath. Maybe maybe tomorrow is today again. Yeah. He sent me a picture like he got a great deal on ground up pork and stuff Did like that. Did we find out if there's going to be more winter? I'm, I'm actually, I know that like I don't want to wish this on anybody, but I've talked to a couple of people who are like, to build up water reserves, they're hoping all over the United States that there's just a little bit of extra winter this year to, to hopefully, especially like, you know, forward, like not to have fires and things like that later in the year. Like snow helps, right? Terry's here said, it's 34 degrees here in Nashville, but leaving in the morning headed to DR. Okay. Uh, for some Latin style dancing. Ooh. Life is off the couch. Heck yes, it is, Terry. Thanks for always inspiring us, Rachel and Wow. Jill. Thanks so much for giving us a good idea of what we can do off the couch. Dancing, like, I love dancing. Joe, not so, not much. so much. But, like, the entire month of November, I brought an Instagram dance every single yeah. day. Joe, we watched, uh, you did join me for one. I did. We watched uh, Best in Show last night. I I am too lefty. I you are you are Eugene lefty. Levy's character. Yeah. Carver Chris was asking, "What's our take on organ meats? Hide it, hide it, yo. We actually were double dog daring ourselves, Carver Crisps, at our recent meetup in Orlando because they were so nice to send us things like liver and heart." And the heart is tolerable. Have a heart. <clears throat> the heart is tolerable. The Don't liver, make me eat the liver. It, it's hard for me. We just grind it up and stuff because we yeah. know what's good for I us. I freeze dry it. There you go. That's what we've been doing. We've been freeze drying it. Make it happen. Mama Cat's got a great question. Do you have a recommended amount of carbs for weight loss? I've lost 50 pounds and I want to get more into keto versus low carb. Great question. This is a great question. And the answer is as little as possible. Yeah. So I do not like to give a number because human nature and Rachel especially nature. for people like us who uh, want to push the envelope for people like us who maybe have an addiction issue to carbohydrates and, and we have food problems and things like that. We will push the limit, and if you tell me I can have 30 carbs, I'm going to eat 30 carbs. No, I'm going to eat 31. Good point. So the answer is keep them as low as possible. Now, if you want a number, a good place to stay is under 20 to 30 total, total. carbohydrates. Total. total carbohydrates. Do not fall for the net carb game. It's a trap. It's made up by food companies to sell you products. Now, there are certain fibers that I'm okay kind of ignoring, but you need to learn them. And most of them are not in any kind of keto snack. Um, you will find them in things that like protein powders and like oils, like powdered oils. One of the best ones you're going to find that I'm completely fine if you want to deduct it, but I still would say total. Um, but acacia fiber is a very good healthy fiber. Um, the way your body handles it, it really helps you in ketosis. It helps your gut. But you get into fibers that are in like bars, like soluble corn fibers and things like that. And they list it as a fiber. You deduct it and then... It screws you up. 
So stay under 20 to 30 total carbs. But the, the idea is if you only eat 10, you're good. The lower you eat, the better you're going to be, especially yeah. if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to work on diabetes or insulin resistance, the lower your carbs are, the better. So for us, some days we're like five total carbs. Right. Other days we're like 25, 30, maybe even 35. But I look at where we out average out during the week. Now, if you're asking why well, I want to have a keto treat, limit yourself to like one or two a day a week. Having a total carb cap helps. It really, really helps. Yeah. Miriam Bear is in the house as Chris is taking his leave for the evening. Hello, lovely. I miss your face already. So I want to go back to carbs for a minute. Okay. So here's the thing about total carbs. Let's say you count total carbs and you know, you're used to counting net carbs and you want to, and you're, you deduct, I don't know, Vegetables? allulose, oh, allulose, okay. okay? And we're saying deduct it, don't deduct it, count all the carbs. The worst that's going to happen at the end of the day is you ate less carbs than you thought you did. I love that. Right? But you don't want to get into this situation where you go, I'm only eating 10 carbs, but you're really eating 20 because you're not counting the carbs that are in heavy whipping cream because all heavy whipping cream has carbs. Bad news. And cheese, all cheese has carbs, even if the label says zero. So I'd always rather you be under than over. So hopefully that helps. If you want to follow up, go ahead and ask us. Hey Buck, thanks so much for that $5 super chat. It says, I need advice. My spouse, an alcoholic, has been sober for six years plus. Congratulations. But eats and drinks carbs out of control. Um, so did I. I ate and drank carbs out of control. That is a really challenging thing. First of all, we really celebrate your partner's sobriety. Yes. That is that is numero uno. Um, and actually, uh, you know, if you talk about like oxidative priority, alcohol is very undermining yes. for a keto journey. So that's that's one check off the box. So congratulations for that. Um, as far as weaning off of carbohydrates and beverages, I think it's hard for all of us. Okay, to do that. so he, I'm, I'm gonna kind of need some follow up for this, Buck. Just put at two crazy ketos, but follow up. Does your spouse want to do keto, or do they have no interest in doing keto? Because that's a big deal. If they have no interest, you're never going to be able to force the issue on them. Yeah. The best thing you can do is to continue to eat your way and then, you know, give them your food and then plus whatever extra they want. And my personal experience is, is over time, they come along. We've talked about this in podcasts and videos. If we've got loved ones who have witnessed us try every diet under the sun, including the cabbage soup diet and the progresso soup diet, um, Buck says no, uh, nope, no keto ideas. No, okay, okay. So the best thing to do is just live your life and and hope they come along, and drop little things. Like I said, make them good fatty foods and kind of give them that first. If you're cooking dinner and you're making like some delicious bacon and stuff for you, give them a lot of that and just a little bit of like the other stuff and let them fill up on the meat first. But you're gonna have to let them come to themselves because what happens is. They've seen us do all these things and they think we're just in another fad. Yeah. And sometimes it's going to take you doing this for a couple of years. And I, I know that we don't want to hear that, but it took Rachel nine, ten months to follow me. It really did. So sometimes we just kind of sit back and and hope things work out. Linda says, yes, six more weeks of winter. Okay. So we're just going to have to make do, right? Yep. Like I that that's, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, what is it? Sly? Slipknot. Hey, Slipknot. I've lost 30 pounds on month two in the wow. company, Hercho, who is helping me out. That is fantastic. Congratulations. Linda's here, so thank you for all of you do for the community. Linda, thanks so much for being here. Lori, why don't we eat carnivores? What, uh, like, car why do you mean, why don't we eat carnivore? Um, for me, personally, carnivore is not sustainable. For a lot of people, carnivore is sustainable. I'm editing a podcast right now where we interviewed Connie in Hawaii who was actually on the cover of Women's Day magazine. Right. And she eats carnivore for the most part and she eats OMAD with 72-hour fasts in between. And for her, it's very, very sustainable. For me, 
Not too I, much. I like some jalapeno poppers. Uh, yeah. I, I like to have a keto brick once in a while. But you do what's sustainable. If carnivore is sustainable for you, it's a great way to eat. But if you are going to go in and you do carnivore, but you can't stick to even playing keto for more than a couple weeks, you're not ready for carnivore. Yeah. Do what you can do long term. Well, also, I think it's really important that you like you set goals for yourself um, and you attain them. Because if you're like, I am going to do the lion diet and you're like, I can't even get a straight week of keto, then when you fail, there's so much guilt and there's so much shame and it's needless. We don't need to do that. Like we do not need to put ourselves in that per, you know, that that position. So if keto, if ketovore is sustainable for you, like you're going to do great. Normal ketovore said my blood sugars are returning to normal. I've lost 14 pounds in wow. one month doing ketovore. I have a ton of energy and I was sleeping. Amazing. Amazing. That truly is amazing. Tony said, one thing I've noticed about my health doing keto is I sleep better. And it's refreshing. I mean, I feel like I wake up and I am authentically ready for each new day. I mean, it used to be, I slept till noon. I slept till noon every single chance that I got. I slept away the day, every day off I ever had, I just slept it away. I was just constantly exhausted and fatigued in my body. So the fact that I like, I hit the bed run, I mean, hit the floor running every morning. It, it's really refreshing. Yeah. Megan said. Hey, Megan. Uh, question. This month I want to track because I feel like I may not be getting in enough fat or protein. When you enter in meat, do you add it as pre-cooked or post-cooked Great weight? Great question. Great question. Okay, so first let's talk about if you're going to increase your food, if you've been under eating, slowly increase. Unless you're okay with possibly gaining some weight. So if you've been eating 1,300 calories and we want to get that up to 2,000, if you go from 13 to 2,000. It'll take some time. You may put a couple pounds on. And if you're okay with that because you want to really get your metabolism going, then that's a great way to do it. If you don't want that, what you want to do is just slowly increase. Like maybe 100 to 150 calories worth of beef, of meat and uh, fat each week until you get up there and then you stay there for a while. Now, as far as tracking, um, what you want to do is, for me, I like to track pre-cooked for two reasons. Number one, when you track protein, it's never going to change. Right. Okay, so your pre-cooked protein is going to be the same as your post-cooked protein. But when you, most foods that you're going to find in something like chronometer, they, you don't know when they're going to say like ground beef crumbles. Well, here's the thing. How much fat did you drain off when you did that? So I would rather track all of the fat that's in those crumbles. And then if I'm a little under, I'm good because you're probably going to add some of that fat back in with butter or something like that anyway. So like if you have like ground beef, if it let's depending on which mixture you use, let's say it has 100 grams of protein and 100 grams of fat. When you cook it, unless you take all of that fat, like maybe you cook it in a pan and pour it back over your burger, you probably end up with like 100 grams of protein and 90 grams of fat. But if you gonna cook pre oppose like afterwards and use that number, you don't really know how much fat you're putting on your plate. I'd always rather be under than over. So that to me is the easiest way to do it. Also remember this, those numbers in chronometer, the numbers on a package, they can be off by 20% legally. Right. So if you're adding up all of your food and at the end of the day, you ate a thousand calories, you may have eaten 1200 calories and you may have eaten 800 calories. You don't know. Robert Sykes had a great little podcast about keto break because you're allowed to be off 20%. So he could literally legally put his keto break out there and say it's a thousand calories and it's 1180 calories. Right. And the problem is, is when you're using other ingredients, like he's getting ingredients, he's got to rely on theirs right. as well. Are they being So honest? are they off? Because we don't really know unless you actually put it into this big machine that burns stuff off. Now, he said he's down to like 5% discrepancy. 
His goal is to get to 1%, but that is not easy. These are the companies that you want to, to be customers of. Right. Somebody that's like, I am trying to get down to 1%. Right. Within 1% And era. that's why he said that. So if you looked at old keto bricks, I don't have one here, um, but a keto brick was always 151 grams. And he said, you're going to notice some of the new ones that the one package may be 145 grams and another flavor may be 147. Another one may be 156 because he's really trying to dial it in and give you a thousand calories so that you know what you've got there. Suzanne says no more joint pain. Unbelievable. And I mean, I think that you're probably, there are probably people right now that like, yes, we're having like a very powerful winter, but even winter feels differently. I mean, oh my goodness. When we would have a, even like a cool day and Joe, like before, like all of that arthritis pain, all of that joint pain, you know, that cold would hit you and it was miserable. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely miserable. Mary's here. Hey, Mary. After four years, I've gained 10 pounds over the last few months. I haven't changed how I eat at all. I'm trying, but it just isn't going. What do you think about a PSMF a couple of times a week? I don't think that you have enough weight to lose to do PSMF personally, Mary. I've seen you. We've hung out with you. Um, I would maybe start working maybe a little on weightlifting and check out your sleep and your stress and stuff like that. And what I would probably do if I'm coaching you would be let's track for a week or so and see where you're at. See how much you're eating and then just play with things a little bit. A lot of times you only need to knock off maybe like, you know, an extra, you know, five grams of fat or something like that. Just right. like a tablespoon of butter or something. Yeah. But that, that's going to be, now if you want to do PSMF, I would only suggest, I never suggest doing it more than one or two days a week. But on the days you're not P, doing PSMF, you should be eating your normal eating. PSMF is pretty much like doing fasting. And so for people who don't know, PSMF is protein sparing modified fast. The idea is instead of fasting food for the day, you're going to eat only a little bit of calories and pretty much everything is from protein. It's like no more than 30 grams of fat and like I think it's like five or 10 total carbs, but it's really designed for people who have like a lot of weight, like 100 pounds or more to lose. Something else you might want to look at, Mary, and, and this works a lot because I know you do intermittent fasting, is changing up your intermittent fasting schedule. Yeah, sometimes our body Getting gets like more really in sync smart. with like with uh, our circadian rhythm, maybe eating breakfast and lunch and not eating dinner if you're doing intermittent fasting, moving up your eating window, um, trying to stop eating before five o'clock, something like that. Um, let's see. I love when you guys say hi to each other. Chris, the lionfish, the pigeon of the sea. It really is, right? Tony said, finally made my plane reservations for Yay. KetoCon, coming in a day early and leaving the day after the close. That's a great idea. You're so idea. much better than me. I still haven't made our ticket There is so much to see. The last time that we went, we took a tour. I highly recommend Of the, the state capital. capital. It was free. Completely free. And it was so interesting. Very interesting. I, I highly recommend it. Keto Simple said, like the snakes hey. that have overrun Florida as well. Yes. Very true. Snakes in the Everglades that eat alligators that are not uh, indigenous. Iguanas. Iguanas are not native and they're very invasive. There's all and kinds. And they ruin our infrastructure. There is all kinds of li lizards that are here. Like, are, it's hard to find the little tiny lizard that you're used to, like, trying to catch when, when you're a kid. Like, the little tiny lizards, they're gone and have been replaced by these big giant ones, we were at a park um, on Sunday with Chris and Miriam just sitting around and we saw, I mean, it was the brightest green lizard ever um, with a long pointy nose. It wasn't like an iguana or it was like some, like not the normal iguanas, another one. Um, but yeah, it was just like, just walking around. And it's like, you were not here 10 years ago. You just were not here. Okay. Kyle and Debbie have hey, a question. Hey, Kyle and Debbie. I am currently a 2KK public member on Mighty Networks, and I really want to subscribe to upgrade as a 2KK family member, oh. but the links I try my laptop just keep taking my current Mighty Network page. Help. I'm going to show you. Uh, first of all, for those of you who are new, we don't do Patreon anymore. We, If you want to support us and help us out on our mission to change the world one rib at a time, we do everything through Mighty Networks, which is a great way 
to just hang out with people, get accountability, support each other. There's a whole free, free room, but if you want to support us, there are you can upgrade for five, ten, or twenty-five dollars a month. And we do things like release things. We have an extra chat in there. This Saturday, we're doing a live stream just for channel supporters. Uh, and there's a link for it down below. But all you got to do is go to members.twocrazyketos.com. Now, if you are a free member, here's how you do this. Okay, so we're going to come over here. And what you do now, I obviously don't need to join a group because I'm in all of the groups. But so when you would log in, members.twocrazyketos.com, here's your feed. Here's your feed. If it will click. There we go. Okay, so what you would do if you want to upgrade, you're going to come down and hit these groups like Meatheads, Public, Family. Now, I'm already in them. So I'm just going to go in a group. But if you're not, when you click on one of them, it's going to say click here to join. And yeah. that's how you do it. Okay? Because I don't think I have a, like a, another like subscription that I can show you. But thanks so much for, for asking. We really appreciate that. Do I have, is there a way to log out? Okay. I'll play with that in a minute. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, let's go back over here. The cursor is like, nope, I'm going to go where I want to go. Well, there's five screens. Valentine's. Valentine's, the bane of my existence. Uh, nothing planned for Valentine's Day as usual. Boo hoo. The, the one day of the year we do not go out to eat Valentine's. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Jackie said, Oops. Joe, Jim wants lionfish and puffers if you can catch them down. Well, we can't we're take, we it. don't take fish out of the water. Lionfish we're allowed to kill. Yeah. Um, we, just because we, they're an invasive species we with will, no known We will predator. eat those. Yeah. Uh, you just gotta make sure you don't touch them. JC, so what is the actual name of your sausage poop log and where do I find the rest of it? What a good, that is like, I don't what think, would you call that? What did we call that? It's like a, it is a, a cheeseburger roller. Like they sell at 7-Eleven. Yeah. And I think the easy kebab is, is the, the device the that we used. Right. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. Let's see. Or Alyssa says, is uh, it, is the safe answer the type and amount of nutrients consumed and the length of the fasting period? There still needs to be more research. Okay. Not sure what we're answering there, but. Okay. Makes me want to. Watch the abyss. Chris said, how about you just don't need a decompression chamber? Right. <laughs> blessed Mama. Hi, Blessed Mama. Question. I started keto August 2022. I'm losing weight slowly. Slow is good. Yeah. I'm extremely tired and I'm losing a lot of hair. My doctor is up my thyroid medication. What am I doing wrong? Most likely protein. Well, protein and possibly fat. So I'm, I I need more Um if your doctor's saying your thyroid's low, that could be some of it. That could cause you being tired, something else. But again, if, if you're way under eating, under eating can cause you to not lose weight. I know that doesn't seem right. Right. But it can. Ask Rachel. So I was you at, can talk about that for a I minute. was at uh, 500 calories a day um, for two years when I started keto. And it's very scary. I know it is scary to decide that you are going to up your calories, whether we call them protein or we call them fat, you call them carbs. A lot of times, especially if you've been dieting um, professionally, like, like I have for years and decades, it can be very scary to even contemplate upping the amount of fuel that you put into your body. But you got to prime the pump. Like right. you need it. And a lot of times it's slow. It is very slow because you have to work yourself up to this new way of eating. And if you can just get past the hump, get past the, the fear, um, the weight does come back down. Uh, I got to go tell a child to take the dog out. Oh, okay. Because she's pacing she's at this pacing. point. So, okay. So back to that question. Um, <clears throat> When the, you got to understand the way our metabolism works. Our body wants to live in homeostasis. What that means is it wants to burn all of the fuel that you're taking in. 
but it needs X amount of fuel to live. So you have something called the basal metabolic rate, which is the absolute minimum amount of calories or fuel that your body needs to just survive. I mean, never get out of bed. Not like just a lay relaxing bed. day. I'm not just... talking about getting up and going to the bathroom. Like just get up, lay in bed, don't do anything. Yeah. That's your basal metabolic rate. That doesn't include anything else. If you're eating less than that, or even just only a little bit over it, because remember, that's not moving, your body is going to begin to slow things down because it needs at least that much to survive. So what is it going to do? It's going to slow down functions that it doesn't think is necessary to live. Like, it needs to keep pumping your blood. Right. So it's going to keep going. And I want to equate this to, I've told this story before, but a lot of people are new. A few years ago, I had my truck. I'm driving down the road, and then all of a sudden, I noticed my uh, radio turned off. Then I'm going down, and now my windows don't go. And then I'm going down, and I have no gauges. What happened was my alternator, which charges your battery as you're driving, died. So I was only running on battery powder, power. Your car is run by a computer. So what my computer was doing is it's, hey, I need to keep the engine running as long as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down non-essential functions until I can have to just shut down the engine. That's what your body does. And one of the things it does is... It starts dropping hair because hair. You can not live without essential. the hair, right? Joe is proving right Your now nails it's not will essential. Stop growing all of that stuff. Yeah. So protein is part of it, but so is fuel. If you're not consuming enough fat, you're not giving your body enough energy, and it will start doing things like that. So those are some things you need to look at. But also, again, it, you may have some thyroid issues. Remember, we're not doctors. Defense Wiz is right. Then That's when you know you have a ton of money. Tennis court on your yacht. It's like, yeah, what in the world am I going to do with all of this money? When we were, like, floating on this boat past all of these houses, some of them were, like, there were seven houses on a house. There was one, it was Wayne Huizinga's former residence, and one of the seven houses on his property, because he had bought, well, he had bought even more houses. There was like five other houses for like loved ones right there on the the um, New River in Fort Lauderdale, like a super, you know, swanky area. Um, he had a dog house that his German shepherd had a house. It was bigger than our house. Bigger than our house. And it was just for the dog. Okay, I wanted to go back over to, to Mighty Networks because I've got like a profile that's not paid. Oh, okay, cool. So if this is a free member profile, so you'd have up here, here's your feed, this is everything that's going on. By the way, you can also sort this. Last activity is just somebody commented, but if you go to sort and then go to newest, that's posts in order that they've been put in. Becca Price has the newest comments. So what you would do is you go over here on the side and you see courses and then you see groups. And when you click on groups, you see here's the Meatheads group, which is the $5. Family group is 10, partner group is 25. So you'll see this if you're only a free member and you just hit choose plan. There you go. And once you choose plan, you come down here and you can choose whichever one you want. We come up here, we have choose, and then you're just going to go ahead and pay it. So like, let's say we do the $10 one and then you can pay for it monthly or by year. You save 8% if you pay it by the year. Thanks so much. So that hopefully that answers your question. Uh, I saw another question here. Great question. You guys have got good questions. You got some awesome tonight. questions I love tonight. It when we can answer questions. Um, YTH question. How does a ketogenic diet affect athletic performance? My experience from what I've experienced personally, as well as a lot of people I know, like our good friend Coach Bronson and Robert Sykes. Um, is it does better. When we were in Omaha last year, we interviewed, was it Kirsten Powell? Yes. She's an, she's a, a marathon runner. runner. Yeah. Her best time was when she was completely carb free on a marathon. Best time. She didn't use any juices. She didn't use any carb stuff, but her best time was when she ran completely off of like on ketones. And the thing is, is that she talked about like people who do carbs, you can only go, what was it, two hours on carbs, but 40 hours on fat. Yeah, like you hit a wall. Because again, 
because we run on fat, we can utilize our fat reserves in a pinch. That's why, you know, people can intermittent fast for so long on keto. We don't get hangry. We don't get that like, you know, aggravated, I'm so angry if we don't eat. Yeah, so you don't need carbohydrates. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. And your body doesn't need carbs to build muscle. It doesn't need carbs to have energy. You need a little bit of sugar in your blood because certain functions your body need sugar. But the good news is, is your body can create it. To give you an idea, you need about a teaspoon of sugar in your blood, but the average American eats like 45 teaspoons a day. So, and then you want to know why are we fat? So, uh, keto simple. I want the cold to stick around. We have all our drinks in the garage. Our, our big, big fridge. fridge. I grew up that way. We used to put everything out on the patio. Like my mom would store the milk on the patio. When I lived in Virginia, I remember my roommate, Patty, she would like just stick all of like, it, like the frozen stuff when we would have like too much stuff for the, for the little refrigerator that we had, she'd just go stick it in the snow. Do you guys do that? Do you like store some stuff for a while in the snow? I thought that that was so funny. Cause I was like, you're putting some groceries outside. She's like, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Tony, what is your recommendation for eating when you have a very high insulin resistance as little carbs as possible? Yeah. So 20 to 30 is a great place to start, but sometimes we have to dial that down. You may have to dial it down to 15 total carbs, 10 total carbs. You may have to do beef, butter, bacon, and egg, or carnivore for a little while. Um, you can reverse it in our personal experience. And Rachel's mom was a type 2 diabetic for over More 20 years. More than 20 years. years. Um, so it's absolutely possible. Um, but it's going to be two things, actually. It's not just carbs. You want to lower your carbs as much as possible, but also... You really want to, if you have really bad insulin resistance, that's where you do want to dive into some intermittent fasting. After you get fat adapted, do not start keto and immediately jump into intermittent fasting. It'll come naturally. But limiting yourself to one, two, or three meals a day with zero snacking in between. And a snack is anything that you put in your mouth that has any kind of calories. If you put one nut in your mouth. A meal happened. Then you just had a meal. So might as well sit down and have an actual right. meal. And every time you eat, your body produces insulin. If you eat some fat, if you eat some butter in your coffee, your body will have a little bit of an insulin reaction. You wanna, you need insulin, but you want to limit how much and how often it happens. So when you only eat one or two meals a day, that means you're only having one or two insulin reactions throughout the day. So a lot of times we'll have coaching clients and they'll be like, I'm only eating one meal a day. Okay, great. What time are you eating? Four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm eating this, 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 and this. Okay, I want to have my coffee. What time do you have your coffee? Six o'clock in the morning. What's in your coffee? Four tablespoons of butter. You had two meals. Yeah. Okay. So if you put a tablespoon of butter in your coffee, you broke your fast. Now it's a small break, but it's a break. And it so happens. that's things that you need to just we can face count it. your coffee. That was a meal. Yeah. Or push it off later. But that's that's the best thing you can do is make sure you're not snacking one or two meals a day and keep your carbs as low as you can. Now, if you are new to keto, just like a friendly reminder, if you are on medication. Well, that's the next question. You definitely want to keep an eye on it because you will be surprised. I mean, a lot of times we go on medication in the hopes of moving numbers a little tiny bit over the course of a long time. But you will find as you get rid of those carbs, things heal quick in that area. So yeah. we've had people who within a month on triple B and E had to significantly reduce we, their blood pressure we've medicine. We've had people that had to lower yeah. insulin within two days of starting. Yes. Okay. So keep an eye on that. Okay, Swan, do you know if you're a diabetic that uses insulin, can you even get into ketosis? Is it even possible? Yes, I'm a type two. Thank you. I was going to ask you were a type one or type two. Both types of diabetics can do keto. Type ones do have to do a, use, do a little bit other things. We have several subscribers who are type ones, but you do have to worry about having too high a ketones. Let's explain ketosis, okay? Ketosis is when you, you're not in ketosis, okay? Ketosis is when your body is utilizing ketones for fuel. That's what it is. That's the definition of ketosis. When your body utilizes ketones for fuel, it is not creating ketones. It's utilizing them. Creating them is ketogenesis. That is you where your them. body is making them. 
How does your body make ketones? Ketogenesis is basically your body's mechanism to not die. It's a starvation <laughs> method. Thanks, body. So we used to watch Dr. Pool, right? And he, you'd have cows go into ketosis because they're not eating enough food. So they go into ketosis. When you're not eating carbohydrates, your body needs to find another way to have fuel. So it can turn to fat and create ketones. If you're not eating enough, you can go into ketosis, into ketogenesis. Rachel, when she came back on to keto the second time, so the first time she did it for a month, she quit because she didn't lose any weight. I was mad. Took her another nine months. And the way I got her back on to keto is in January that year, she was fasting. What she was eating was a slim fast shake a day. Yep. And Some like coconut water. a giant container of coconut water, which if you've ever seen, coconut water has a lot of sugar in it. Just plain coconut water. It has a lot of sugar in it. And that's what she was having. And I basically went to her about day 20 and I said, I want to measure your ketones. And I said, because I know you're going to be in ketogenesis. You've got to be producing ketones. And her ketones, her ketones were like a 0.5. Now, she was eating sugar. But she was still in ketosis and in ketogenesis because her body was starving, so it's making ketones. So you absolutely can. And by the way, the way I got her on, I said, you're in ketosis and in ketogenesis now, so just do keto with me. And she said, only if you make everything that I put in my mouth. Best deal I ever made. But I have to say that another reason why I came back to it, and we've talked about this on different podcasts, is the fact that Joe was having so many health benefits mm -hmm. from keto. And I really wanted him to stick to it as well. Okay, Slipknot. So with my keto diet is more kind of strict. I'm only allowed 30 carbs a day and 14 ounces of protein a day as, as well as there's a lot of lovely keto food I can't have. 14 ounces okay. of protein? 14 ounces of protein. We don't measure protein in ounces, okay? Whoever's telling you to only have like six ounces of protein at in a meal, please ignore them. I mean, I, I don't want to be mean, but this, uh, a hand palm size amount, that's nonsense. We look at grams of protein, not ounces of the weight of your meat. Because if you take, like say a chicken breast, okay, we all knew chicken breast, even though it's very lean. If you take a chicken breast and it weighs 10 ounces, that 10 ounces consists of fat, water, and protein. It's not 10 ounces of protein. It's 10 ounces of a piece of meat. And it probably has about 45 grams of protein. You need to be eating at least 100 grams of protein a day. Um, but I need to know more about, like, wh where are you getting these numbers from? If you're not eating any keto treats, eat two or three meals a day until you're comfortably stuffed, focusing on meat and maybe a little bit of veggies. And you don't have to count anything. Yeah. And you're going to have some success. And it and, and it's refreshing when, when you don't have to be. Now, if counting. you're going to enjoy keto treats and make a homemade brownie or a mug cake or something like that, you got to start being careful a little bit because it's easy to overdo them. Keto treats tend to be very high in fat. It's a lot of calories and you don't have a shut off mechanism for that. I can eat like eight keto bars, but I can't eat eight giant steaks. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So... You just, that's where you have to start doing it. And even when you have those, that's a meal. Have it with a meal. Tina, thanks so much for the $9.99 super sticker. Look at that adorable. Is that like a little chick egg, a chicky baby egg? I think so. Thank you so much for that. Um, Let's see. John started keto the 1st of January. So far, I'm down 20 pounds. Wow, John. That is fantastic. Now, again, people see this and they're like, well, I only lost five pounds. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You ain't doing nothing wrong. John's results, my results in the first 30 days Rachel's is results. not typical. And for men, they tend to lose weight faster. Con. Women lose inches. size and in inches. But also men have more muscle and less fat. And one of the reasons, little secret, we don't ever hear anybody talk about this, the reason they lose pounds quick is they they have more glycogen stores because they have more muscle, so they're losing. It's mostly water. Yeah. A, a good healthy weight loss is a half a pound to a pound a week. So if anybody, so is, if you lose four pounds in a month, 
you're doing well. So if anybody goes nanny nanny boo boo, I have lost more weight than you, tell them like maybe you maybe it's just a glycogen store. Okay. Tony's going snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef in a few weeks. Wow. They have you make uh, wear a protective suit to keep you from jellyfish things. Congratulations yeah, you can wear a rash on that. guard. Like that's what we'll wear. I'm, I'm not gonna wear a wetsuit when we go on the cruise. I'm just gonna wear a rash guard. So you'll see pictures of me. Um, I it's a I wear it underneath my wetsuit because it lets you get in your wetsuit easier. Uh, especially when it's wet. I needed a rash guard when we used to go to Universal Studios because my thighs were like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. And I needed a rash guard. I met a guy in the dive shop the other day that uh, went, uh, he actually films for um, Nat Shark, Geo? Week, Shark Week and that Geo and stuff. And he was swimming in the Great Barrier Reef outside of the cage with great whites. That's just crazy, yo. I, I, no. How about No. <laughs> I was hoping to see sharks that. today because the, the I'm calling your mother. The wreck we were on is near the Lady Luck, and there were some CCR divers that were swimming over. And they said if you if you get down first, sometimes you'll see some sharks because they like to go between the two wrecks. They don't bother you, but what happens is as soon as you drop they bother down, me. they don't. They're as, present. As soon as you drop down, they run away. They don't. Okay. They so they run. She, they swim away. Oh, okay. So even our dive master, when she was tying tying off, she was like, "I know you guys want may want to see something, but as soon as I get down there, they all swim away because they're afraid of us." Sam Bear is asking, "Where did you get your rash guards on Amazon?" No, uh, I'll send Dad a link. I bought them from Scuba.com. I did. Scuba I bought them from Scuba.com. Um, and they were cheap. They were like twenty bucks. They're, I mean, they were really cheap. They're I like, might wear I'll, them. I'll send Chris and Miriam the exact ones that I wore, that we have. I might wear and them yours, all the time. You're wearing. I feel like a trainer. What's that? You're wearing a small. Okay. And I'm wearing a large. I feel like I'm wearing a medium. I'm not sure. Oh no, you're wearing a medium because it's 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 like baggy, but it's short. Like Miriam's gonna need an extra large because it goes by height. So when you look on it, goes how tall are you? How, not how yeah. It's not, not it's not weight. like not weight. It's it's going by height, and especially because it's got the little thing that wraps around your feet, and so yeah. I'm Actually, it, I think I'm even in. A, I'm in an extra large. I'm kicking extra large it old, for a six foot. Old style with like. Do y'all remember the leggings that had the the thing that wrapped around? Like the arch of your foot, those were life, yo. Like that was that was all of middle school. Was like those, um, those pants. I know that we've replaced them with yoga pants, but like those leggings, I wore those every single day. And like you would have like the long, very wild print button down shirt. Am I the only one that had to dress like that? Ready, Sakita said, not health professionals, but we sure do learn a lot from Aww, you. We really appreciate thanks, all guys. you do. Thank you guys. I appreciate what you guys do. Uh, Tina, I melted keto brick. Great idea in my silicone. Love keto brick. Love me some keto brick. It was funny. So I go, I'm out on the boat today and they've got snacks, free snacks. It's chips and cookies. And I pull out a keto brick. Stirrup pants. Yes. And I'm eating keto brick. And this one guy is like, what is that? And I'm like a thousand calories of deliciousness. Well, oh. And this girl goes, your cardiologist is going to love you in a few years. I'm like, actually, I've got, you know, a calcium score of zero, and I had my arteries scanned, and I've got arteries of a 25-year-old, and I'm 52. Well, I just love the fact that, like, and you may experience this. You just got to let it just roll off of you. If I was sitting there they eating. They don't understand. If I was eating a sleeve of Oreos on the boat, no one would say boo to me. The fact that it's like, hey, we're in between dives and we need to power up guys. And they're putting out things like a Cheeto for you to eat. Like, does that seem like power up no matter what eating plan you're on? Does that feel like, oh my gosh, Cheetos, that's health. That'll definitely power me for the next dive. The fact that like you're usually eating meat and stuff, that's when people say something, right? Because they're like, oh, that's a lot of bacon. When I was eating like an entire family sized bag of Doritos, everybody was like, that's fine. I'll let you pass on that. Yeah. It, and unfortunately, they just don't know because yeah. of what they're being taught by the media and everybody else. This person I was talking to, you know, she was like, well, I hope you're at least using good vegetable oils, you know, because that helps clean out your arteries. And it's because why... bubble. And I'm like, well, I use coconut oil. 
and I use avocado oil and I use olive oil. She, she was good with the olive oil. Um, but the thing is, is that go pick up a bottle of canola oil. It literally says on the front, heart healthy. Only uh. that causes inflammation. It's what makes seed oils bad is the way they have to make them. They have to heat them up to very high heat to make the oil, heat oxidized fat, and then that ends up in your body and poisons you, and it becomes inflammation. I love when Ben But that's what we're being taught. When Ben Azadi speaks, a lot of times he will just kind of share a little like YouTube video about like, what does it take to make canola oil? It, it, like, if you watch one of those videos, you will never touch that stuff again. Like, if mm. you just see the, nothing about it, the process of it is like, mmm, health, that looks delicious. Please, I want to put that right in my arteries. So, little known fact, and somebody actually put it in a comment in a video the other day. I knew this, I never really discussed this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Little known fact, centurions, people who live over 100. Yes. Many of them, their cholesterol is like over 300. Like a lot of them actually. I'm gonna live forever, baby. And, and they have big fluff, they have high HDL. Get some fluffy. Big fluffy LDL mm. and high total cholesterol. And they're living to be 100. I'm gonna be right there with them. It's like- Let's do it. Most people who have heart attacks actually don't consume enough salt. And they don't have high cholesterol. So if high cholesterol is so bad, why do people who have heart attacks have not have high cholesterol? Just, question. just saying. Just just saying. Chef Fat Grams, the best way to stay true to keto is to be creative in the kitchen. And it can I be agree, easy. but I also disagree. Well, because I Because like what's creativity. nice about keto is you can be creative or you can be simple. And you find what's good for you. For us, I like to be creative once in a while, but I also like the simplicity. I like that I can eat ground beef and eggs every day and chicken nuggets and and. I can be super simple or I can be creative. So it's great because a lot of times, you know, I think about um, plant-based whole food, not veganism, just plant-based whole food. They don't eat fat. They eat all veggies. But how much can you do, right? You can't get super creative when you're eating plant-based whole food when you can't add any fat to your food. You can't add any fat. So like, that. what are you going to do? And I look at here is you can be super creative and pretty much recreate any non-keto recipe into keto with the exception of maybe phyllo dough. Um, and I know people are working on it. Like I know Anthony's talking about he's trying to do it, right? Yeah. Um, but you can also eat nice and simple, and that's what is so great about Which it. Which is really, really nice. Now Jackie says, stir up pants, not for her. Let's bring back the bell bottoms. When I am shopping now, I was in like Old Navy and there's an entire section of mom jeans. Have we noticed this? Mom jeans are back. Is anybody like super excited about that? I was like, oh my gosh, Th them's the 90s right there. Mom jeans. Um, I want to get to these questions. So we may run long tonight. Okay. Uh, Krager, I'm 96 Hi. hours into a fast with only water, chicken, beef broth, and keto chow daily minerals. Ketone and blood numbers are great. But is the bone broth limiting my autophagy? If you're fasting for autophagy, could be. But wha that's what a are long you, fast. that's a long fast? What are you doing it for? And they have more and more studies have shown like the best benefit. Like Thomas Law has got some great videos on this. Like 36 to 48 hours is a really good fasting number. Um, but you're only having chicken and bone broth. I mean, you are getting a little bit of protein, so that's that's some good. That's a good way to get some protein and not lose muscle mass. Remember, when you do extended fasts, you are going to lose some muscle. You are when you're going to have these long, long fasts. I would personally continue with it, and I mean, but why else are you fasting? But you know, yes, it is limiting you. I mean, some people will only do will will actually do a dry fast. I would not do that for more than twenty four hours. Yeah. Plus, I don't want to be around you if you're going to do it for more than twenty four hours because we gonna like, be a little. You're smelly. not even allowed to wash your hands or brush your teeth or any of that. Oh stuff, my gracious! But. Renee is a hard pass on the mom jeans. <laughs> hard pass. Christy Davis is here. Hey, Christy. I've been struggling the last couple of weeks. Every time I slip and eat sugar, I get so sick because I'm trying to control my sugar without medication. I decided I can't be around sugar. It's an addiction. I'm right there with you. You are not alone. If you are somebody who is like, I believe I may be a carb addict, 
it, am I a total weirdo if I need to have everything that triggers me out of my house? No, you're not a weirdo. You are not alone. I am a recovering carb addict. Joe is a recovering carb addict. You are in the right space and you have to do what you need to do to stay on track because I know what that vicious cycle is like. When you're you're eating carbs, you feel like sweaty garbage and then you try for a little bit, you work them out of your life only to like test the waters again. Yep, still feel like sweaty garbage when I eat those. So the best bet is probably eliminate them altogether. Mama Cat said, I'm struggling with eating after work. It feels like a habit more than a need, but you're half the way there now. Yeah. Because now you've recognized why you're doing it. So the So my advice would be, Okay, why are you eating after work? Are you like decompressing? Are you, is it like your way to, you know, calm down? Are you processing some stress from the day? What could you do instead of eating to accomplish that same thing? That's take exactly a, how we would coach you. Take a walk. Do you need to like sit down and do a puzzle? It's so funny. I, in downtime, I got the, I got this from like, the thrift store. And when I am waiting, because waiting used to stress me out. Like if Joe is working on something and I'm working on something and we're supposed to like have a meeting and I'm waiting, um, that would be something where I would reach for a snack. And now I reach for one of these like word finds because all I'm trying to do is distract myself for a moment. And those things really help me. Exposing darkness says, as much as I dislike beef, butter, bacon, egg, it did let me lose weight after months of a stall. Way to go. It, 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 it works magic. It really does. Uh, Roar in Alaska said, can you eat iguanas? Yes, you can. You can. can. But and who wants to clean it? Here in Florida, it is completely legal to kill as many as you want on your property. Um, because, again, they're invasive and they destroy our infrastructure. Because what they do is they go and burrow under our bridges and things like that. If so. somebody could process it for me, oh, maybe. Don't. Maybe. I don't want to see a carcass. I don't want to see anything to do with it. So if I can go get some and... And then tell me they're gator bites or something. Okay. Mary said, thanks. I really value your advice. I've never done anything but keto every day. Keto and maybe every day. I just need to change it up a little bit. Change is good. It, it It's before... I start like slashing any calories, that might be the first place to start because that that is easy. I can eat the same amount of food. I'm just shifting the times. If nothing moves, then we can look into like maybe reducing the energy. But but I would definitely look in like just changing the times that, that you eat as like the first resort because like, I don't wanna touch my food. I want that to be the last resort. Uh, Keto Simple, check out booking flights through JSK. They're a semi-private oh. carrier, not expensive. Save loads of time, too. They fly out of Miami, Orlando, and fly into Good. Austin. I'm writing that down. Yeah. Shorties, you said. J, or I'm sorry. JSK. JSK. So. For me, it's just, it's about when it gets in and stuff, and I try to have a non uh, a, a nonstop flight. Uh, Jennifer, how long of a fast is the longest you've done? Just wondering. A week. I've done 155 hours. Yeah. I know we went a week. Um, Mama Cat, Linda, I think I need to find a good snack that's easy and low carb uh, for after work. After work, or just plan on sitting down eat and meal. and snack. and eat and eat that meal together. But like, you can incorporate things that you consider like snacky foods. Like I'm thinking Bunker Hill cheese or cheese wisps. Some of the, like crunchy that's made totally out of cheese. You know, cracker type stuff, almond crackers. Um, you can leverage nuts. That's a great time for nuts. Have all of that snacky food that's really crunchy and delicious. Just keep it within your meal. If you could have that, you know, two to three meals a day until you're comfortably full, go ahead and incorporate those things that you see as more of like a snacky food with your meal. Uh, Chrissy Davis, I had to rearrange all the food in my pantry so the non-keto friendly food is not in my line of sight. Yep. Yep. That's what we always recommend. Either put it in another room, put it in a closet, or what we did. Um, it doesn't bother me now. I just, I don't want it to take up room in my pantry. We have a small kitchen. And so, and also, here's the thing is sometimes we film videos and it may show up in a video. And for me, it doesn't bother me, but I know some people triggers it. So like I've had the kids have a loaf of bread. We go put that right away yeah. so it's not in a video so that it doesn't so, trigger somebody. So nobody else sees it. But don't kid yourself. But I put everything to the very bottom shelf. Merchandisers spend 
tons of money. It's not an accident. There is nothing on a shelf in your grocery store that is there by accident. Mm -hmm. All of the, 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 the right placement for your eye line and also for your child's eye line, if they're sitting in the shopping cart, that costs money. They pay big money. The stuff that you have to like go and, and hunt for, they're not spending that kind of money. That's why a lot of times you'll see the generic stuff like somewhere else on the shelf because like the big Kellogg's, they're, they're, they're spending a lot of money, craft, a lot of money to that so that you, your eye is directed right to their product. Uh, the ferret said, looking at picture of lionfish, they don't look very big and meaty, They and, but aren't the spiny they are. spines poisonous? So they actually are very meaty. They're vi they have a lot of meat on them. They're very easy to clean, and it is a very sweet meat. They're, they're really, really delicious to eat. The spines are poisonous. Um, they won't kill you, but it'll give you the worst bee sting for hours that you've ever... So you have like Kevlar gloves. So yeah, so I have Kevlar, Kevlar gloves, and then I have this thing called the Zookeeper. It's a hard plastic container. You would spear Zookeeper. them, and then you put them in there. Some people underwater cut off the spines. I would just bring them, leave the spines in there, bring it home, and cut them off at home, because I don't want to waste my valuable air underwater cutting off spines. Um, but... It's, it won't kill you. You're just going to be in a lot of pain. That's why, like, I keep in my bag a hot pack. So those things where you crush them and they heat because that's how you relieve the pain is, like, pouring hot water and stuff on them. Uh, Mama Cat, if you have Hashimoto's, it can cause chaos in your body. I'm struggling with hair loss and low energy, too. Thyroid medications were just increased. Check out, uh, Check out Nisha. Nisha loves it. Nisha loves it. Her channel, um, she, she just has some great tips for dealing with Hashimoto's. Uh, let's go down. Kyle and Debbie said, thank you for the help. Uh, we are now part Aww. of your family on Mighty Networks. Thank Thanks you so very much, much for and welcome. Us. Keto Simple said, yachts are the new way for billionaires to invest and diversify their portfolios. Same thing with private jets. Oh, so what was interesting. It's, it's more of, it's a way for them to not have to pay taxes because a lot There's of these no American flags on well, any of the boats. Even before you get to that, a lot of these people they make more money in interest in a day than they can possibly spend. So it's like, it's like if you come to me, here's ten thousand dollars. Either go spend it on some frivolous thing or that like a toy, or pay seven thousand dollars in taxes. Okay, I'll I'll buy the frivolous toy because right. they just gotta <laughs> spend the money because then they're employing people. They've got all the, the 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 cost of running it, but then you add in the fact that they're not paying sales tax because they're going offshore. It's and crazy. Like all they have to do is like go they offshore. They do it with planes too, and they can pick any country that they want Even to register own. the boats. There was a whole bunch that was like registered to this it's island offshore signing. That's like doesn't even like ha like there's no inhabitants, and they're like, oh, that's the country. That's the island that this boat belongs to. It was just like, wow. It's crazy. Uh, seek your first. I requested a John Money Networks, but it says still pending. Is there something? Um, you're not doing it right. Um, you should never have. You don't request to join it. What you have to actually go to our Mighty Networks, members.twocrazyketos.com. You're going to do it on a computer, on a browser. So just go on your computer. If you don't have a computer and you only have a phone or an iPad, you open up the browser, not the Mighty Networks app. So you open up the browser, whether it be Safari or Chrome or Firefox, and then you go to the search window and you type in members.twocrazyketos.com and that will bring you to that one page and then you can sign up that way whether you want it free or not free. Um, but yeah, there's no requesting anything. So you must not be going through members.twocrazyketos.com. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Utley's back said, I've done full Iron Man's full keto. Way to go, Renee. She She's in full beast mode. Uh, Joanna said, well, hey, on the American diet, I remember just stuffing food in my mouth to make the, pa the pangs go away. I didn't care what I was eating. I can remember. That was definitely the same for me, Joanna. I can remember, like, going to the mall. Like, we had, like, a bunch of errands to run. And me just feeling like that terrible like crash that you would get. And I'm like, I still have to 
you know, continue with all of my errands. And I was the same way as you. It was literally like, what is the quickest thing? Um, sometimes it was like a, uh, like candy out of the, the gumdrop thing. Sometimes it was like my line of sight was the food court. Sometimes it was just like a freestanding thing. It was awful because I would be really good about saving money and I didn't want to waste it on like garbage. And I knew like, I do not need pretzels at the mall. Like I, I have other things I need to purchase, but I felt so terrible that I was like, I had to reach for whatever was the first thing around me. It was terrible. Defense with said, I can't rely on the food in my player's tent. Carb heavy Sammy's and tons of fruit and energy yeah. bars. I can't even take the bread off because of the dang celiac. Yeah. Cause if it comes in contact with it and you've got celiac, like that could be super dangerous. Uh, Christina said, hey, thank Christina. you, Joe and Rachel, on advice on how to make beef jerky in the oven. Oh, I made good. it three times. It came out delicious. Making it again this weekend. Love watching you and Thank Rachel. you so much. And thank you to everybody who shouts us out on different social media um, platforms like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. We appreciate that so much. And it really does get the word out that our channel even exists. Like we need your help. If you really enjoy our content, do us a favor and share it with somebody. Um, even if it's just like a recipe, whether someone is keto or not, they might benefit from even some of the meat that we prepare, right? Like even if they're they're not keto, but they like a good lasagna, we've got great lasagna recipes, chili, um, all kinds of things that whether you're keto or not, I think that people can make use of. Okay, Peaceful Acres Farm said, according to Dr. Peltz, fat does not raise glucose. Uh, we didn't say it raises glucose. He said you can have a slight insulin reaction. Anything will cause an insulin reaction. It's a very slight insulin reaction. Seeing Joe come through the door Causes mine to go up. Well, that's glucose though. Right. Okay. But you will have a little bit of a glucose reaction even when you're not eating carbohydrates. Your body is going to make glucose. You can be 72 hours fasted and have your glucose jump up 50 points. It happens, and it happens every morning when you wake up. Your glucose jumps up even if you don't eat. It's, your body is supposed to do that. Because you have to pee? Dr. Barry has talked about this though. You will have a very slight insulin reaction. Now... Does that mean don't have a half a tablespoon of butter? No, um, but just understand it can cause things. It's not a massive amount. W insulin isn't just for reducing your glucose. It is got a lot of different functions. It's an on its function isn't only to lower our glucose. It's a growth hormone. Without insulin, you will not. You'll have a hard time even maintaining your weight. You can't grow muscle. It can affect your it can affect your testosterone. Insulin has a lot of different functions, so we need insulin. A lot of people think, well, I don't want to have insulin. It's not you the need enemy. Insulin. It just we we don't if we if we give ourselves too much if we're because we're eating so much sugar, our body can't like keep absorbing it, and that's where you get the resistance because it keeps bouncing off and bouncing off, and that's where you end up with insulin resistance. But it is a it is a fat storing hormone as well because it's a growth hormone. Uh, Mr. Ali's back. Eat all the ounces of protein. Yeah. Mary said a bell just went off. Started gaining those few pounds since I began working. Um, and I, at work. At work, uh, I eat the same amount or maybe even less. But a bite here and there, prolonged insulin. I awesome. better yep. retire again. Yes, I think the answer is retirement. Absolutely. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely something. Anytime you change up your schedule, sometimes you change up your eating schedule, you know, at, at the same rate. So like, yeah, that's a, that's a great thing to notice. Uh, John said, took your advice to fix my gut problems by upping my fat and salt and it improved in days Good. after fighting it for almost a month. Oh, John, that that's makes our awesome. heart so happy. Thank you. Tina, is it bad for me to sip my coffee for a few hours since I'm a driver? driver. Trying so hard to get enough calories, I'm eating a half a keto puck just to get my calories. In a, uh, an Asian, give up again? Oh, yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. We don't want you to give up if that's uh, the alternative. Is your calorie got a bunch of stuff in it? Your coffee have a bunch of stuff in it? Um, it, it really depends on, on, on what's in your coffee. You know, there, there's, there's so many nuances to this. And, and 
there's no right answer for everybody. Everybody is different. Rachel can drink coffee all day long. Rachel can drink coffee at 3 o'clock in the morning and go to bed. Yeah. You know, it's just different for everybody. I see Alyssa and John says, find a zero-calorie bridge to help wean yourself yeah, to, if snacking. Yeah. That's a, Dr. Cybus talks about that. You know, like having a black, a cup of black coffee, even a diet soda, and every time you want a snack, do that. I also, it, it doesn't even have to be a food thing. It literally could be every time you want a snack, go for a walk. Every time you want a snack, uh, play a video game. Just anything to distract yourself. You're just looking for a distraction. The thing is, is that we have the opportunity to do a little bit more research. The lazy way of handling the need for distraction is we just rely on food. Why? Because that's what we've done. Like that's what we've always done. Um, a lot of times if I finish something in my office, I just wanna get up and be someplace else and I've just always made that someplace else the kitchen. But I can just put on my sneakers and go for a walk or I can go and chat with the kids in their bedroom or go chat with Joe or just be outside with Tabitha. I can be someplace else um, that doesn't have to be the kitchen. And the same thing with distractions. I can do something else besides just eating. It's just that that feels very familiar to me because I haven't researched a lot of other things that I could do when I need a distraction. Yep. Mary said, my friend had a heart attack, got a stent, mm. did not have high cholesterol, but since then is on statins. Shaking my head. Yeah, that's usually, I mean, that's, that's very much quickly prescribed and just out there, they haven't tested statins and done research on women. They're prescribing them to women all over the place, but like, show me the research of like what it is well, doing to how women about in their the bodies. research on men? It's a 5% reduction in possible chance of a heart issue. Like, not worth all the side effects. For me, personally. I'm yeah. not telling you to take a statin. I personally will never take a statin. Joanna said, I'm a carb addict. Joe, thank you for admitting your addiction because it made me realize just how much of an addict I am. I can't control sugar, chocolate. Us either. We absolutely can. It is not some, there are some things in life you just don't negotiate with. You just leave your coat behind like Joseph and you keep running. And for us, carbohydrates is one of those things. Oh, I wanted you to read that. Oh, it may not sound like much, but I am two days without carbs. That's a Actually, lot. Actually, that sounds like a huge win. I now take it day by day. I have failed carnivore in the past because I was looking at long-term challenges. Now it's a one-day challenge. That's the best way to handle it. We live life, we have goals that are big goals and we see those in a month or a year, We in terms of weeks, like where we want to be in five years, but we live out our goals day by day and taking them in 24 hour chunks is brilliant because I think about, I eat my meals in a day. What am I eating today? How am I moving today? I have to take my challenges one 24 hour period at a time. Nicholas and Chrissy are here, hi. Krieger said, I got sick. I was letting my body devote its energy to healing, adding the broth to get extra sodium. Just okay. wondering if it killed all the atomic. It didn't no, kill all of them, no. but it's definitely not as good. Now, here's yeah. a little trick. I don't have any here. Do you have any? What you looking for? Uh, seasoned salt. Uh, no, it's in their cabinet. Okay. So get Redmond seasoned salt. It's orange. But a half a teaspoon and a hot cup of water. There's no chicken it in it. It tastes like chicken broth. It tastes like chicken broth, but there is no chicken broth in it. Yeah. It's wild. And I also highly recommend making that broth like that, super easy, and dumping a can of uh, the Costco big giant can of chicken in it because it tastes delicious and it's an easy little chicken soup. Sabrina, I experimented hey, Sabrina. with the cottage cheese chips tonight, sprinkled oh. with sweetener and cinnamon. Do you think this would help add pro uh, getting more protein? Um, will you get more protein? Yes, but there's a lot of carbohydrates in cottage cheese. I love cottage cheese, mm. but I really limit it. Um, and then you're also having the sweetener and the cinnamon. Personally, I think the easiest way to get more protein is carnivore chips. Yeah. Either make your own or get carnivore, carnivore snacks crisps. or carnivore crisps um, because you get a whole bunch of protein and not a lot of volume. Right. Like, I ate a bag on the, on the bo boat today. It was four ounces. But guess what? That was the equivalent in protein of eating... A 10-ounce steak. Wow. That's how my mom but is getting it in. But it was thin 
Potato chips. She, my mother cannot handle great big volume, but she's trying to up her protein and her hair looks fantastic. We were both talking about how like our hair is darkening again. Look at this. Like mm. I, my hair is coming back with a lot of like dark spots, um, which is wild to me. And mommy's having the same situation going on. She wanted to up her protein. That was really important to her. She just couldn't get it in with the volume. The carnivore chips help. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Keto said, um, I'm a triple beanie advocate. Until I did that, I wasn't able to lose weight, let alone see any health benefits. Wow. Uh, normal let, normal ketovore. Uh, whoever said that they have done full Ironman on keto, I need to pick your brain. Definitely want to, like, probably Defense Wiz and, and Defense Renee. Wiz is an athlete. Yeah. Renee is is an athlete. There's a lot of athletes. Definitely want to, to follow Keto Savage. Yep. Um, over from Keto Brick, uh, Natural Bodybuilder, Coach Bronson, uh, Natalie. You also, uh, you have Natalie, and then you bikini, also, the Bikini Pro. The Bikini Pro. Keto Bikini Pro. Keto, yeah. And then you also have Dr. Fit and Fabulous. Oh, yes. Jamie Seaman, she's a doctor, mm -hmm. which is really nice, too, and she's definitely an athlete. Any more before we get off? Peggy, I'm having hey, a Peggy. physical next week, and I'm giving a doctor a, file, a flyer on Bronson's How Keto neat. Summit in July. I hope she attends to learn more about keto. That is really great. If you are uh, looking to encourage people, consider buying a ticket for somebody and bring them along. Say like, hey, we're gonna go to Keto Connor. We're gonna go to Keto Palooza. Go with me, let's have a, a great day. Chris Miller actually just shared an update in Mighty Networks on her beautiful daughter, Megan, which we had, uh, we had the privilege of hanging out with her when we were at the Tampa RV Super Show recently. And she is more than 50 pounds down since she attended Keto Palooza with her mom. Now she just came as like part of the road trip. Like, hey, we've got a long drive. I don't want mom going by herself. Let's go together and have some fun. Um, and the keto community inspired her to, to, to join keto. And she's doing fantastic, looks absolutely great, feeling, feeling good in her body. So yeah, invite a doctor. Invite someone you love to one of these conferences. We don't make money off of conferences. Nope. We just want you to know about It'll every help conference. You survive. Because we feel that resolve is strengthened in community. That's why it's so important okay, to us. Two more real quick. Wild Turkey Bluff. I'm eating carnivore less than 10 carbs daily, nothing any weight in three weeks. Keep going. Keep going. Um make check and see. Are you overeating? Are you undereating? Um how much activity are you doing? How often are you eating? All of that stuff plays in. So there's something called the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of losing weight and your health is what you put in your mouth. That is absolutely true. However, the other 20% is comprised of three things. Movement, sleep, and stress. Can't ignore those three. If you can have an on-point diet, like be absolutely perfect, but if you're not controlling your stress, if you're not getting enough sleep, and if you um, are not doing any kind of movement, you're probably going to just sit and, and not have any results. Right. So, you may initially have results because you've just gone from eating standard American diet and a whole bunch of junk, but eventually it catches up with you. Yeah. I, I, I hate to say that you have to exercise and you don't have to you don't have to go hit the gym for two two hours a day, five days a week. But you do Gotta need move. to move. You need yeah. to move every day. 20 to 30 minutes of movement. And it, you have to be walking around your house and then two or three times a week do things like push-ups, pull-ups, planks, and squats. And then once in a while lift heavy things. Go to Home Depot, pick up a bag of 50-pound rocks and move it from one side to the other a couple times. And that's all you got to do. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Utley for for training on carbs. Stay true, train your same, boiled eggs and bacon, cheese sticks, I use pickles, pickle juice, uh, in the run sometimes, meat sticks, babel cheese, Baby salt, Bell. That, salt tabs. Yeah, great advice. So, okay, we are gonna get off. Thanks so, so much for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who are channel supporters. We're gonna see you Saturday. We're gonna have a live stream. It's gonna be in the evening because I have lacrosse training in the morning. I don't know what time yet because I'm waiting to find out when my games go to. I'm 
off the top of my head, we're probably going to be like 6.30. But I'm, I don't know how long all of the training is going to go. But we are definitely going to have, as soon as I get the schedule, we're going to set up a live stream for all of our channels. I have a hot date with my mom. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. So excited about that. Relax on the couch and hang out with mommy all night. I plan to hold the couch down with some pajama pants and we're going to be watching some old movies. So if you have any suggestions of a favorite old movie that we need to watch, please leave it in Mighty I'll Networks. I'll give you one. And if you are a camper or RVer, this is a must. I can't believe how many people we met that have not seen this, mo seen this movie. The, the Long, Long, long trailer. trailer with Lucy and Desi. I am definitely going to be incorporating one that Miriam... I want to go watch that. Well, Miriam was singing a song when she was here, Pillow Talk with Doris Day. We own that. And, and that is in my mind. So I, we definitely have to watch that movie as well. Have a good night, guys. We Bye. love you.